Today on Larry King Now, New York Rangers goaltender Henrik Lundqvist. Take me to the final with the Kings. Is that a luck in the game? Um, you need luck. It's a fast game. You need <laughs> luck in every game, I think. And, and sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't, but a lot of times you earn it. On playing in New York. I think it's the perfect mix of being in the spotlight, but then get a break from it. And a lot of it because, you know, it's not the biggest sport, but also because in New York, there's so many other things going on. So you, you can, you're in there for a little bit, and then you kind of disappear and live a pretty normal life, which is nice. On his love of fashion. It's about wearing what you feel like and just feel good about it. Plus, who's the older? Right here. How many minutes? <laughs> 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah. It's, I it's time there. I was supposed to come first, but it kicked me in the wrong direction. <laughs> so. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Look forward to this for a long time. The great hockey goalie Henrik Lundqvist is our special guest. He's the New York Rangers goaltender. He's dubbed the King. His rookie season in the NHL is when he got that name. He's an Olympic gold medalist, three-time All-Star, 2012 Vezina Trophy winner, awarded the best National Hockey League goaltender. He's the founder of the Henrik Lundqvist Foundation to create positive change in the lives of children and adults through education, music, and sports. And most recently, a 2014 ESPY nominator, nominee rather, for the best NHL player. Congratulations on, on the nominations. Thank you very much. Is, is the goaltender the worst skater? <laughs> when you're a kid, did they say you play goal? Um, Why would you want to be a goaltender? Well, some players might say that. I think differently. I think uh, for me, what really inspired me early on was the responsibility but probably also the equipment. As a little kid, I thought it was just amazing looking, uh, interesting looking. And, and heavy. It? Heavy, but still, it was something about it, the mask and the gloves and pads. And, was and that the was goalie okay. equivalent yeah. of the quarterback or the pitcher? Um, the pitcher more the pitcher or the catcher, if I'm equating baseball? It's close. I, I think it's a unique position because you're, you're on a team. It's a team sport, but at the same time, you're, you're by yourself. For the most part of the game, you do your own thing, you focus on Play your the whole game. game. And, uh, Play all the minutes. Yeah, you do. And so it's, it's a different approach, I think, especially mentally than if you compare to uh, a defenseman or a forward. The Rangers, the entire nine years, all with the Rangers, did they draft you? They did. Uh, what round? Seventh round. Whoa. Yeah, it, it was a late one. Um, and my brother, uh, he went in the third round for Dallas. He was I, a forward, right? He was a forward. Uh, he's still playing, but um, I thought I would end up in Dallas in the sixth round because we talked to them about maybe going there if I was still around. Uh, but they didn't pick me, and then in the seventh, I went to New York instead. What did you think, though, about coming to New York, the most famous city? Um, I think my, my last year I played in Sweden. This is 04, 05. Uh, people kept telling me, I, I think New York will fit you, you will like it, and it's a good challenge for you. I wasn't sure what they were talking about, but my first year in New York, I kind of understood where they were coming from, and, and uh, uh, I loved it. You know, the day one, the organization treated me so well, and, and the city, you know, it's, it's just uh, exciting to be there. It's definitely challenging sometimes, but... Um, if you love to compete and, and... Well, the New Yorker knows their sports. They do, and they they're passionate. They boo at the right times. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if they boo, you deserve to be booed, right? In New York. Well, the first time I, I watched the Rangers game, they booed off the entire team after the game. <laughs> so that was my first moment watching Ranger hockey. I was like, wow, this, is, this can be a scary place. But at the same time, um, you know, when you do well, I, I don't think there's a better place to play. Some athletes have a tough time, though, in New York. Um, accommodating New York. I, I think it's a lot tougher to come in as a big name. For me personally, I came in as a nobody. You know, I had some, some good years in Sweden, but coming to New York, nobody really knew who, who uh, Henrik Lundqvist was, so I just had to start from the beginning again. When did you know you were good? Um, good question. I, I don't know. Around uh, 13, 14, 15 there, a lot of people said, you, you have talent, but, you know, it's a long way to go. Um, but... Uh, I, I always kept dreaming that, you know, one day uh, I might play for the national team or for my 
team in Sweden, Frölunda, it's called. That was my biggest dream. And then, Do you still play with them? I played there before I came to New York. Uh, and my brother's back there playing now. But uh, you don't go back and play anymore? No, no. Now it's only in New York uh, full-time. Do you play for the national team? I do. Um, mostly in the Olympics. Uh, World Championships usually. We're, we're in the playoffs still with the Rangers, so it's hard to leave and, and play for your country. <laughs> but that, that's, that's a really proud moment when, when you go out and play for... for You've gotten country. every award possible that you can get as a goalie in hockey. Do you want to stay with the Rangers forever? That's rare uh, for an athlete to stay. Yeah, and, and last year, you know, I re-signed with the team and, and it was a big priority for me. You know, I, I spent nine years there and to get a chance now to to play your entire career for one team, that, that was important to me and, and I'm happy that, you know, they believe in me because I, I definitely believe in them. And I, in America, I stay in even though they sell out every game, the Rangers, every seat is taken at every Ranger game. It's always been that way. The Rangers always sell out. It's still the fourth sport in America, right? Basketball, baseball, football. Does that bother you at all, or is that the way it is? Because in Europe, that's not true. Right. Well, no, you just accept that. And it's obviously different when you go to Canada and play, where hockey is everything. Mm -hmm. But playing in New York, I think it's the perfect mix of being in the spotlight, but then get a break from it. And a lot of it because... You know, it's not the biggest sport, but also because in New York there's so many other things going on. So you, you can, you're in there for a little bit, and then you kind of disappear and live a pretty normal life, which is nice. Take me to the final with the Kings. The Rangers finally get to the finals. Had a great, you had a great final, I thought. The Martinez scores that win. He gets that goal win. Second overtime. Yeah, yeah, we had two, two second overtime games here in L.A. Um, you know, it's it's tough when the season ends, and, and and you go from a high pressure situation and so much adrenaline to nothing. Did luck a play second. a part? Do you think? Is there luck in the game? Um, you need luck. It's a fast game. You <laughs> need luck in every game, I think. And and sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. But a lot of times you earn it. Puck I misses do. by an inch. Yeah, and and you know, you, we always talk about you have to earn it by making good decisions and and, and work hard. And uh, I thought they played really well. The Kings stay. They're a great team, and, and we fought until the end there. But with a little bit more of luck, I, I think it could have been a different series, no question. The hardest part is the pressure, right? Or do you put that away? Uh, for a goalie, I would say so, yes. It's how you think. It's how you handle expectations from yourself, from your teammates, and especially fans and the entire organization. So that's why when you play in big games, the pressure adds up. and. Uh, I think the difference between doing well and not doing well is how you manage that. Are process. shootouts tougher or not? Um, they're fun. You know, it's a <laughs> challenge to, to, to go up against the best players because a lot of times they send out the best player on the team. And as a goal, you have a big say in if you're going to win or lose. So I you like have, it. You have an affinity for the soccer goalie. <laughs> He's got a bigger net. <laughs> bigger net, fewer shots, though. You yeah, know, I, no. I was watching the World Cup a lot, and they have five to ten shots a game. Yeah, maybe, it's but Twelve shots, you break a record. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Henrik is the fashion icon, and when we get back, there's more to talk about that right after this. Henrik Lundqvist, the great New York Ranger goalie, is our special guest on this edition of Larry King. Now, you play in New York with another great athlete, Derek Jeter. Do you know him? I don't know him, no, but obviously coming to New York and and see him, you know, how he interacts with, with other people and the way he's been putting up his numbers, I mean, it's, it's so impressive to see. I must the other say. sport you play is tennis, right? Uh, I play a little tennis, yeah. Are you good? Uh, it depends who you compare to, but I, I, I can play a little bit. You play with McEnroe? Uh, sometimes, yeah, he, he's good. He's pushing me pretty good there, especially off season. When I see him out at his uh, tennis facility out in uh, Upper East Side there in, in New York. But he, he's, he's a fun character. No, oh, he is. He's a riot. <laughs> uh, what took you to the world of fashion? Were you in fashion when you were a kid? Were you the kind of kid who was the sharpest dresser? No, not at all. And uh, I don't know. I, I think between 16 and 22, I had a. a, a a time where I tried a lot of different things, a lot of different looks, and uh, made a lot of mistakes, but you try to learn from it, I guess. And then uh, 
uh, coming to New York, obviously, it's it's one of the best places to be when it comes to fashion and to to see different styles. What is swag? Because you obviously have swag. I don't Can know. I don't it? know if I do, though. I mean, it's it's a pretty funny. It's a look. It's a look, yeah, and, and uh, I'm I'm pretty consistent with the way I dress. Uh, I would say. Um, some people maybe like it, some people don't. You change it like now you're wearing a slim Yeah, color, well, a, a wide lot of stuff shirt. that I wear are European cuts. Very nice. And, and uh, a lot of European brands. Um, I, got, I took some heat early on, nine years ago, when I came to the league. I remember guys who were asking about my suits and my ties and if they were too tight, too skinny. But um, I think the last five, six years, that, that's been changing a little bit. This is sort of look you have today. Well, the yeah, well, I, I dress in a suit a lot. We have to wear a suit when we travel uh, to games. Uh, we're you have on to the wear a suit, that's a league. have to wear a suit. No tie, though, when we just travel. But going to a game, we have to wear a tie as well. So five days a week, we're in a suit. So I feel pretty comfortable wearing one. All right, let's see another one. Aha. The, the yeah, here, here's a little more rock and roll. You know, I love music. I play guitar. So... A part, one part of me loves being dressed up, you know, tuxedo or suit, but then there's a part of me that more of a rock and roll guy. Do you have your own clothing line? Um, we're doing like a fan-based clothing line right now. It's called Crown Collection, and then we raise money for charity. And here we're um, in leather. Here's the more, yeah, more rock and roll. Uh, I feel comfortable in that as well. So I kind of go a little mixed there sometimes. Does your wife affect what you wear? Uh, she can comment on it. She doesn't Which, tell me what to wear, but when I'm done, you know, before we walk out the door, she might say, maybe skip that scarf or something. Does she shop with you? Uh, not often, no, but she's a great person when it comes to gifts. She always buys me great gifts, and she has a good, good head for that. Do you so. ever think of wearing braces? Maybe, yeah. Not maybe. Well, are they, are they, they're never in. Are they in or are they out? They were definitely in a couple of years ago. Definitely. <laughs> you know, the hipsters were wearing them for... I've worn them for 35 yeah, years. Yeah, so you're always in that. That's right. No, but that's, I mean, that's your look. But that it's was... Really, I created this look. You did. For, for television. And uh, you've been very consistent with it, yeah. too. Is that important, consistency, or are you inconsistent? I think when it comes to fashion, it's not important, no. It's about wearing what you feel like and just feel good about it. You have to feel good in it, right? For me, yes. You know, I, I walk into a game, for example, if I, if I wear a suit that I feel good in, and you know, it, I just like showing up to the game, and, and that's a when good When the Rangers start. go on a trip, Liz, and you might have a six-game road trip, right? Possible? Possible, yeah. West Coast trip, you do mm -hmm. it. Do you take, how, much, how many bags you take? <laughs> <laughs> you fly <laughs> private, so. Yeah, no, it's just one bag. You have a couple of extra shirts. I always go with a lot of ties, though. I like, do? I, li I like options. Always too many ties, and guys make fun of it, but, um, you know, a couple of extra shirts, a couple of extra suits, but I always go a little overboard on the, on the ties. Twinning out. Hey, wait till you see what's coming with Hendrik next. We're back. We have a special guest joining us, Joel Lundqvist, uh, Hendrik's identical twin brother and captain of the Swedish hockey team for Lunda. He played three years in the NHL as a forward. Why weren't you a goalie? Uh, one had to be in the net when we grew up, so Henrik chose to be it. Yeah. You played against each other three seasons, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. When I played in Dallas. Uh, Did you have a score on him? I didn't. Uh, Just in practice. Just in practice. <laughs> but it was special games for sure to, to play against him and see him on the other side of the, of the ice. Was it different when he was coming at you? I was so nervous. You know, that, that game, because it was such a build-up. We played together for 16 years, and then suddenly we're playing against each other for the first time, and that was just weird and nerve-wracking. Who's the older? Right here. How many minutes? <laughs> 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah. It took his time there. I was uh, supposed to come first, but you kicked me in the wrong direction. <laughs> so. Was your father an athlete? He was a great skier. Oh, yeah. Ski instructor, and that was his passion, I think. But no hockey there. Were you competitive as kids? Every day. Everything was a competition for us. Um, so it's, 
we had some tough battles <laughs> when we grew up, but it's it's been good for us. You live in New York. You live in Sweden. Yes. But you are close. We are. I mean, uh, growing up, we did everything together. We really did. And and uh, you know, talking about being jealous or. We always inspired each other to work harder growing up. If the other one had more success, you know, it inspired the other guy to, to work harder. And, and uh, we played on the same team for, like I said, 16 years. Were you attracted to the same kind of girls? <laughs> uh, like the same kind of foods? Yeah, I mean, up to we were 15, 16, we were, we were like one person almost. Yeah. We, we liked the same stuff, uh, did the same, same stuff every day. So after that, we got more our Things own. Change. Yeah. All right, we're going to play a little game. We're going to have Hendrik put on headphones so you can't hear. Just put on, you'll listen to some music. Right. And I'm going to ask Joel some questions and see if you can come up <clears throat> with comparable answers. All right, Joel, what was an incident or situation got you both in trouble as kids or teenagers? Uh, well, it didn't ha happen very often, but uh, one thing we start, started a, a small fire. Uh, when we grew up, it wasn't in the house. Outside the house, uh, it was under control after half an hour, so nothing happened. But I remember our parents were really upset about it. What do you think Henrik will say is his greatest hockey achievement? Um, probably the Vesna Trophy. Uh, I mean, he, he's been playing so well on, under a whole season, and, and win that trophy for the best goal. It's Huge for him. And who is Messier, you or Henrik? I would say him. I'm, I'm very uh, organized uh, at home and uh, on time all the time. He's a little bit more really late sometimes. But Are you as into fashion as him? Uh, not as much. Okay. All right, now we'll switch. Okay. What was an incident or situation that got you both in trouble as kids? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, we always got in trouble when we were fighting with our sister. Um, he didn't say that. He brought up an incident. One incident that we got in trouble for. Okay, uh, I think he's been hit with too many questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said a fire. You started a oh, fire. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. Yeah, that was not good. That's why I kind of <laughs> forgot about it. What do you think he will say was your greatest hockey achievement? Um, you know, making it to the NHL is one thing, but winning the Western Trophy a couple years said. ago was... Uh, Who is Messier, you or him? Me. You know, he so was the said. guy taking care of the apartment when we yep, stayed together. He said that. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Two out of three, you forgot the fire? Well, like I said, it was not a good memory. <laughs> That's why I put it behind me. It's like a goalie habit. All right, now you put it up. Oh. Checking twins, you got two out of three. Two out of three. Okay, now, Henrik, we ask you, what is Joel's most proud moment on the ice? I think winning um, the World Championships for Team Sweden, twice. What is a favorite childhood memory? Going to Gothenburg and watch Forlanda play for the first time as a kid. Who has quicker reflexes, you or Joel? Me. Okay, put him back off. All right. Okay. That was quick. Yeah. yeah. He got him fast. Yeah. <laughs> What's your proudest moment on the ice? Uh, probably winning uh, uh, the league back home in Sweden with Philanda. That's my team. That's what you said, right? The champ? No, I, I said the, the world championships for uh, Team Sweden, but uh, it's a championship. Yeah. <laughs> it's close. Favorite childhood memory? Uh, Can that be so many? Uh, sticks out. Uh, we went down to to Gothenburg and uh, uh, did a shootout in, in our favorite arena. You got it right. Yeah. Oh, well, we watched uh, Frölunda for the first time, and at the uh, same time, but we, you went to Gothenburg. We did. Uh, Who has quicker reflexes on the ice, you or him? Uh, I would say him, though. <laughs> you were right on that. What was the worst part? Did you ever play games with girls? Like that is, really. you'd make a date and he'd go. We, we hated that when people didn't recognize us. 
you know, we were like one person up yeah. until 16. It was like Joel and Henrik, Joel and Henrik. So doing pranks and tricking people was not really fun for us. It was almost like the opposite. We wanted them to, to see who was who. So, Could your parents always tell who was who? Uh, not always. No? <laughs> well, I always, always dressed in blue and uh, Joel was in red. That was like early on, though, in the first years in the kindergarten. And, and Thank you, Joel. Thanks for Thank joining. Thank you. Thank you for me. We'll be back with one more segment with Henrik, and we'll find out what superpower he would like to have. Maybe he has it already, right after this. We're back with the great Henrik Lundqvist of the New York Rangers. What's this? Tell me about the Lundqvist Foundation. Yeah, uh, I started my own foundation last year. I've been working with Garden of Dreams uh, foundations for, uh, I think, nine years now, and I felt like there's more to do, and I also want to reach people back home in Sweden, so I saw an opportunity to, to start my own foundation, and um, I think my, my focus is uh, wellness and, and education, uh, mostly for kids. So I think being in our position, we, we can reach out to so many people, and we don't have to do that much work, you know, with our names and, and the people that we know and, and the business we are. Uh, I think we have a great opportunity to try to make a difference there. You like working with kids? I do. And it's fun for different reasons. You know, it's fun to just meet them and interact with them and see their reactions. But it also gives you perspective on a lot of things that, that I do. And, you know, I put so much focus into hockey and it's a lot of pressure and... and and then you go and, and spend an afternoon with a bunch of kids that might be struggling with the, uh, illness or something, and, and it just makes you realize yeah. that it's just a game and there's more things to, in life. And, and so, yeah, it, it, it helps me for sure. We have some social media questions. John Hausman, Facebook. Were you aware of the puck right behind your skate in game four of the finals? No, no, I was actually screaming at the ref to blow the whistle. I was really upset he didn't blow the whistle. and then. You know, I think 20 seconds later, I watched the, the big screen and I saw the puck behind me, so. Do you get mad at refs a lot? I try not to. You know, as a goalie, you try to focus on the things you can't control, and the referee is obviously not one of them, but I'm sometimes it, it, it's hard. I'm a fan, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> George Louise 07 on Instagram. Who wins in an arm wrestling match, you or your brother? I have to say Joel. He's a little stronger than me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. James Barry, 83, on Twitter. What are your thoughts on the goalie restricted area and trapezoid? Um, for me, I think it's pretty good. I'm not a great skater or a puck handler, so to be limited just around the net uh, works out pretty good for me. At K Harris, 1073, the last person you'd like to see on a breakaway with seconds left. I must say the best uh, breakaway guy I've met so far is uh, Ilya Kovalchuk. He now plays in Russia, though, but for the years he played in the league, he scored a lot of goals. In the so Ovechkin's ha shot the hardest? It's up there. <laughs> yeah, he can really fire the puck, and it's always a challenge trying to stop it. At Clean ZX3, what's one thing all young goalies with big NHL dreams should know? There's no shortcuts. You just have to work really hard and, and uh, have the passion for it. At Katie Brock, why do you tape your wrists and wear white gloves under your glove and blocker? Uh, old injury on my hand. I start taping my hand after that, and then I just get so used to it that I still do the same with my fingers. Uh, the gloves, you know, I started wearing them when I was probably 17, 18. I just feel like I get better grip, especially when you sweat a lot during the game. The gloves get really wet, so that's why. Galazia 416, your favorite moment from the last season, 2013-2014? Um, winning the conference final, probably. Playing at Yankee Stadium twice. Oh, that's something. Going to the Olympics. How do you like outdoor hockey? It's such a great experience. And for years, you know, we were talking about maybe we get an opportunity to play in New York. And this year we played twice at Yankee Stadium. And it's definitely a memory for life. So I really enjoyed it. You hear the crowd? You do. Sometimes you take it in, sometimes you try to block it. <laughs> it depends what they scream. Now a little game if you only knew. Remember the first girl you kissed? Uh, I do. What was her name? Sarah. How old were you? Ooh, I was probably 
six, seven. At, at near the house or at school? That was probably school, yeah. Mm. Superpower you'd like to have? Fly. Pre-game ritual? Many. <laughs> yeah, you do? <laughs> I have a lot of stuff going on. Do you eat on. before a game? I eat certain times, sleep certain times, listen to music. Are you nervous? Um, a little nervous, so yeah, almost every game. Favorite movie? Um, Gladiator. Music you listen to before a game? Punk rock. Toughest city to play in? Well, with my record, I have to say Montreal, but we beat them this year. <laughs> Is that a tough place to play, though? No, for some reason. They're great for, fans. Great building, great fans. It's always fun to play there. It just, for some reason, I haven't won many games in there the last couple of years. But Fastest you. teammate? Fastest teammate, Carl Hagelin, Swedish guy. Funniest teammate? Uh, Matt Zuccarello. Best <laughs> prank ever pulled in the locker room? Well, they did a good one on me a couple of years ago. What did I just, they do? I just bought a new car, and we had a golf tournament. It was preseason, and then I came out. For some reason, I dropped my key while we were eating, so the guys ran out, moved my car. I had it for a week, so obviously it was like my baby. And I come out, and it's gone. And obviously, I start freaking out and swearing and all that. And then I realized they just moved around. It was right behind me, and <laughs> they loved it. But, what kind of car was it? Uh, it was a Maserati. Uh, favorite hobby outside of hockey? Uh, music, tennis, 50-50. Bow tie or skinny tie? Bow tie. You're not wearing one now, though. No, not today, but... You like bow ties? I do. I, I love to dress up. I think you can tie a bow tie? No, I, I go fake ones. Okay, yeah, me too. <laughs> favorite vacation spot? Uh, well, going back to Sweden is like a vacation for me now. And so that, that is my favorite. You go back and see friends and family during the summer. Do you have a boy or a girl? A girl. How old? Two years old. Daddy of girl? She's daddy's girl? Yeah. Well, she's, uh, she loves mommy right now, but I can tell she's coming more and more on daddy's side. Time travel or space travel? Time. Great meeting you, man. I've Great admired you, you for years. Thank you so much. I want to thank my guest, the King Henrik Lundqvist and his brother Joel Lundqvist for joining us. To learn more about Henrik's foundation, make sure you go to www.hlundqvistfoundation.com. Best of luck for the next season. Remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time. <laughs>